the way I squished in. Call, call, call the meeting to order. Okay. Everybody's Did you get your welcome. chair, Kim? You sure? Uh, we need any changes to the agenda? Not for me. Okay, any public comment? Okay. <laughs> um, do everything in the order that we have it? Or Ken, you guys are here for the... Yeah, I got this is two seconds on the revolving long fun. So. Okay, just all right. So, re all right, we'll do the revolving long fun. Two seconds. Okay. Later. Ken might want to see it anyway. Right, Ken? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> My email or no, no, Kim, do you want a copy? This is a short memo on the revolving loan fund. We've been talking about it for a little while. The economic development reserve fund is available. Um, it's actually, it's just cash sitting there at this point with no particular plan for use of it. What are the uses as a revolving loan fund, which could either be grants or loans, but generally it's called a revolving loan fund because the money comes back through a loan, and then it goes back out, whether it's at 0% interest or 3% <coughs> or whatever. And it's just complicated enough that it would be better done by committee, I think, mm -hmm. because there would be meetings with state officials and John Lane, <coughs> Mandeville potentially, as well as talking to other towns that have it set up and that's you know, the fact-finding stuff is probably more than the select board wants to do, but at some point, a committee could come back and say, here's what we found, here's what we recommend the town pursue. So that's one of those possible steps. The biggest thing about a local revolving loan fund is it's flexible. It's not constrained by state and federal. If you decided to mix it up with some state and federal, you probably have two parallel programs because the rules for state and federal revolving loan funds would be more stringent require a little extra effort but a local one is pretty much how you set it up well in a conversation we had with the existing committee and some businesses that came in the folks that look at mm -hmm. the tax credit stuff that's sort of how we started talking about this and small businesses and and um, a, a lot of times you know for a small business they they have some gaps and sometimes a gap for a small business is only four or five thousand dollars but it's a giant gap so if a community has a, has something like this and can do a you know low interest no interest loan to small businesses then you know it can and and i think it if we get one established it's one of those things that's a nice asset and as you try to attract more businesses in the community to be able to say you know we can give you a little help here and there so I, I think it makes sense to do it and sort of put it on the list of here's here's another committee and find some folks that are interested in doing it and, and putting a little time into it because it's again it's one of those once it gets set up and there are a lot already set up so I don't think it's going to take a whole bunch of meetings from people but you know, I think it I think you're right you sort of need to come up with a with a group of folks that are willing to sit down that group do could continue time. to look at the applications like Right now we have yeah. the Joint Economic Development Board that right. meets as needed for the tax stabilization agreements. And they could always pick up this yeah, job. Yeah, just talk with them. Just relabel them the revolving loan committee or add it to their duties. And uh, see if we can get a couple of people that want to join it. And yeah, with Kim, it. can you give us a quick update on the investment committee recommendation on finance committee? Well, last year when we met with the the board, we suggested that the investment committee be more of a finance committee and that it be more than just the three people. We suggested, or the board, we, yeah. um, the committee, I'm sorry, we suggested, you know, Ron, um, a board member, um, and at this point, Ali, because there, there are funds in the general fund that may be available for investment but we don't know a hundred percent i as a committee yeah. we don't know a hundred percent because some of that money may be tied to upcoming grants 
which would be Ron and Allie's area. So if we had a bigger committee, if you will, um, then we would be able to determine, you know, how much money is available for investing, or how much has to stay because of projected, you know, projects, grants, whatever. So I don't, I don't know if we're talking about the same entity to do these things, but it's, we, we have like three or four. Oh, it would sort of seem like it would make sense if you could get one pool of people All that together. are interested in money and get into it and, and you know, to, to, to do it as one group, whether that's possible or not. Well, okay. They have retire and he'll have time. Learn how to say yes or no. Yeah. <laughs> well, as long as you don't give no loans during October, November. Probably. Yeah, right. <laughs> that seems reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> that open for business then. So shall we see see about just starting if we can recruit some people and can work with you and Allie and see if we can get some people that are interested and sort of take it yeah, from there. Yeah, it's that time of year to do the plea for volunteers. You can <laughs> see who right. comes forward on finance. Right. I mean, because Greg Claus has been doing it for a while, and he might look at See if we can find a couple of folks that might want to do it. Okay. Add it to the list of things to do. I'm recruit Mr. Harvey. <laughs> He's getting out of things. He's just hiring. Oh, he must have time. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. The Memorial Area Stump Dump Facility. Okay. I'm here, I think, uh, for two reasons. One is just to kind of give you an explanation of that. And secondly, uh, of access to the site. Is that correct, Ron? Yes. Uh, currently, there's a... Uh, Around. Currently, there's a no no handles. I want you to say no. Oh, sorry. What do you? Oh, uh, 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 I heard him say hand them around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, Melvin's, which is no longer his. It's his kids now because he's needing to get over to a trust on the North Lake Park Road and the Jones Road. Uh, in current use, I think he has around 16 acres. It's it's not including the current use. It was the, the gravel. Yep. Okay. So we have an access coming up from the Jones Road, which was installed by the town, uh, and that was put in somewhere around 1981, 82, to access the lower part of the pit because a lot of the gravel was going down over towards Longmore Hill, down North Lake Park. Uh, we did all the way from uh, Centerville. Uh, down through to the fire station, uh, we graveled the entire center road. Yeah, down through. Road. yeah, all the way down through, and that was through that period of time. So it was easier access going up the bottom than up to the top. Uh, so now we have, uh, and the access up on top was put in, it was there in 1935 when my grandparents bought the farm because there was another barn there. So that access has been improved and widened, but that the upper access we still currently use for gravel. And we've taken gravel out of the pit continuously since 1947. And the reason continuously, if just so that we didn't lose and it wind up having to go through Act 250 because it was abandoned and we started up again. Right. Uh, last year, we don't take a lot out now. I was just going to say, right, how much you taken out? Last year we took out about 1,200 yards. Okay. Uh, but when the town was taken out actively, uh, we were crushing uh, 10,000 yards every other year, and they were buying 10,000 yards of bank run every year. Uh, not only of that pet, but then we were buying usually five to 10,000 yards out of the Jones pet. And then we were also buying gravel from Benny Emerson out of the Emerson pet, not the one the town owns now. The other one that I think you guys, we were in there with you guys at one time. And I brought along, not that it's germane to what I'm here for tonight, but I don't know if any of you remember when we proposed doing the, buying the Emerson gravel pit. 
it was 1993. So I did a chart and a projection of the cost then and where it would be break even uh, in 20 years. And we were paying 90 cents a yard for gravel at that time, and I projected it would be up to a dollar sixty in 20 years. Well, you'll find banker and gravel nails between five and five fifty a yard. So if you run that chart, I was way off on the low side. So that investment has turned out to be oh, yeah. be a good one. Uh, so anyway, back to the so the upper one we tip and I'll hand these up. Around if you would. Uh, uh, oops. Yep. Get your hands on, don't lose a click. Like to turn. And I'll highlight the, the area where we're currently taking, still taking some gravel out, limited supply. There's probably about five or six thousand yards there. But you'll see where the upper access is, uh, just above where that, that far highlighted. Yep. Once we get the gravel out there, then we'll turn to the right and head the other way. So we'll be headed back towards the Lake Park just so we keep the Fed active uh, on an ongoing basis. So for the stump dump, the part of the pit that's done and over with, and there's no, we're down to have no gravel at all left, is the lower part. So we'll come in from the lower side, uh, and that'll be our primary access. Someday down the road, if, if enough stuff goes in here and fills it up, then we'll use the upper access to come down because they'll be built up enough. <coughs> if you look on this, you'll see uh, uh, where Ken Smith's house is. That's, that's the ring yeah. way over to the right. To the, to the left of that is, uh, that's where we used to go in originally into the pit and that's still open there. And uh, sometimes we'll go in and dump some fill material there or whatever. But, Believe it or not, we used to go in about 300 feet level uh, into that gravel pit. And now if you go 300 feet, you've got about a 100 foot drop. Yeah, the airborne. I'm couch, oh, yeah, yeah, I was going to say, so. what you do? And uh, wow. this, this kind it's of... It's amazing how much has come out of it. You don't, oh, over you the don't years. think about it. And, uh, and uh, the, the town now... Uh, And this uh, just gives you a, a Google Map area photo of that. It kind of, it, it looks greener than what it is until you go up there and actually well, physically yeah, look at sure. it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so the town uh, was the one that taught my grandfather to open the pit up in 19, I, think, I believe it was 1947. And uh, he sold a fair amount of gravel out there, limited, I mean, today's compared to today's standards, for five cents a yard. Then my father sold gravel out of there for years when we were kids for 10 cents a yard. Uh, and was tickled to get the extra money. Uh, so that's, uh, uh, so the stump dump, uh, I have and I made copies just to, I think I've got a copy here. Is, is there any other stump dump around? Yes, yeah, behind the town garage. Well, really, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't advertise that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was gonna but say. you just asked a question. Like that. <laughs> uh, yes, there is. Uh, Johnson uh, uh, Transfer Station has a stump dump. Okay. They're they're like at ninety eight percent capacity. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I talked to him about doing this a couple of years ago, and my motive for doing this is. I'll, I'll operate it till I get my money back for what it costs for surveying and the permitting and all that stuff and then I'll let Melvin's boys take it over from there. Hopefully they can generate revenue enough so they can pay the taxes and keep right. the land. That's that's yeah. the motive behind it. Yeah. Just so mm -hmm. they don't have to sell it off and develop it, they can just keep it. So, so it's going to be a town or anybody can dump, dump it with a fee to dump it? Anybody can come in. We'll charge a fee to yeah. dump. Uh, Howard has a dump down at, uh, what's the pit down there, Rolling? Stan Cliff, isn't it? Cliff. Yeah. So he has one down there. But that's, that's pretty much. It is? Pretty much gone. Yeah. So we, we get a letter of support. Uh, well, I think it makes uh, a lot of sense. It's starting from, uh, and it's not going to be anything has this. The three, three things that we're going to be taking is uh, asphalt, blacktop, 
uh, and uh, either fill and or yard waste. Because you can't put yard waste as of year ago last June, cannot go into a landfill anymore. So if you rake up your leaves and you bag them and you set a small bag up by the yard, they, it's illegal for the caseller or somebody to pick them up. So those all have to go into a into a facility like this now. So we'll get yard waste, uh, you know, branches, leaves. Uh, the the blacktop and the asphalt we're going to segregate and hopefully recycle that because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you can crush that up and it's actually a yeah. it's a it's a profitable product to have. Uh, and then fill and such we'll just leave in there. There's one more area kind of right in between the upper access and the lower access. The town uh, blasted, and we did a bunch of rip wrapping back in uh, early 90s. So the town blasted, I think we did uh, three or 4,000 yards. A year later, I went in and blasted 10,000 yards, uh, no, 5,000 yards. And we used it on a lot of our projects, and those two bridges over on uh, Centerville Brook, uh, the one on Silver Ridge Road, yeah. and the one uh, right by Slobodas. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of four foot, which is type four riprap, which is four foot, which is not very usable for much of anything unless you take a hammer. So so I gave it to the town, and that's what is lines both those bridges over there. Yeah. So it was a, not a great value to me, but it was a, a good value for the town, yeah. and uh, Blown Cody did those two jobs and gave us full credit for the riprap they had priced for those two jobs, and it was uh, pretty substantial. Uh, uh, so anyway, the Salt Waste District has voted uh, to uh, yeah. give us support. Where uh, Gary Nolan has uh, been helping us with the permits. Uh, he's no longer working for Howard. Oh. So he's been uh, doing this permit and a couple other projects for us. And he's working with a and uh, for the state permit. And they're pretty much on board, subject to this review right. and the letter from the Salt Waste District just to make sure everybody's... Uh, and uh, I'm going to hand this out. This is this is uh, the question and answers from February 6th of 1993 on the uh, gra Emerson gravel pit. And just just interesting. If you're interested in that stuff, what do you? I have to assume probably you are. the same questions and the same answers, right? Uh, well, some of them didn't uh, work quite right, but it's well, you can read that in your spare time. But that uh, yeah. gives you a little history about the gravel in town, huh. what gravel was selling for at the time, oh, yeah. uh, and uh, that Emerson pit is uh, that's a good one. You know what? Long skins here, and he's got more knowledge of it than uh, anybody around. Is we jump down to other business right now. Sure. The town should, right now, start should start be putting a plan together to buy another gravel pit. That's correct. Absolutely. So that pit is running out. I know we can take the baseball field, but that's going to be World War Seven and a half. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I. Well, it, it's it's not. I don't think you have to feel, but that'll be somebody's decision. Right. I'm not going to argue that one but way or the other. If we go to that burn. I'll, I'll be long gone by the time that decision has to be made, so let somebody else. Me too, Kent, but my grandson won't be. No, that's right. But the sand, uh, the t as you head towards the road, Howard at one time wanted to take the road out mm -hmm. up there. Uh, Bill Patch wanted to, because the town was going to get all the gravel and lower that road down about 12 or 14 feet. But that came to World War III <coughs> there with the neighbors about taking that road out, and a lot of it was politics, because there were some poor relations between all the parties involved. Yeah. I guess that's a good that way of saying that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't do that, but the better gravel is towards, is your head towards... Uh, Apple Cheek. Yes. Yeah. Yep, right. Through there. Right. Uh, but you can go all the way up to that berm, and then you can drop down and come back again, and you'll find when you do that, you're just about the same level as what uh, Harrison is right now yeah. in, uh, oh, in that okay. furling pit. Uh, but there's not a good source of gravel there. And uh, it would be interesting to talk to whoever is going to be your delegate uh, if you think about pursuing that in the future about a good source of good gravel because I think I could be helpful with that.
And, and the reason I brought that up is I stopped the other day and had a half a meeting with Amy Nato. And we're talking the expense of hauling our winter sand from Garfield to here. Winooski is hauling it yeah. from Winooski from Natos. Yeah. Uh, uh, SDR and Hollywood. Essex, Essex, yeah. Essex is too, and yeah. Westford is. Yes. And, uh, and I talked to Amy, I said, Amy, I said, how long you got left? He said, we just had it geology, what's yep. it, tested. He said, we got 15 years. So after 15 years, guys, there's not going to be any gravel, there ain't going to be any sand around. And everybody's going to be buying up every source. Yes. And so, Lamoille County has the, the biggest source of gravel in the state of Vermont, is, is Lamoille County. So I think right now it, it is better put a thinking hat on to get with Howard before, before or, in the, or, or somebody with the uh, Pisces Mullins. Uh, Tom. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Tom. Yeah. Tom, maybe we can right. do something with Tom, yeah. trade some land around or something. And Howard wanted to cross the road, I don't know if he still wants to pursue this, but he's doing, uh, working with Tom to do a chestnut mm -hmm. tree uh, seedlings over yeah. there to, to help nationally with the, with the chestnut yeah. population. Ah. Okay. That's a fetish of his, evidently. Yeah. So he's working with that over there. But the other, uh, the other available option is uh, more on this end of town, and it might be three, well, about three miles out of your way, but <coughs> there, there'd be another pit available, and it uh, could be financed. It, there's a whole kinds of things that could happen with it. So, what direction? North. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so, <coughs> that, you want to... Right now, get together and start talking about it. Absolutely, because if we don't, if we don't, these guys with deep pockets going to buy these gravel bits uh, up, and then we're going to be paying nine dollars a yard right now for winter sand. NATO's getting yeah. nine bucks a yard. Oh, no. Eight seventy-five. Yeah. yeah. And and the other thing, uh, <clears throat> the Petro Pet, which is really a good one, need yeah, uh, good gravel, uh, extremely good crushed gravel, packs good and. Uh, but it's heavy. But good crushed gravel is is extremely heavy. Well, they're they've got maybe this coming summer, and that pit's going to be closed up there. And then you got the Walker pit uh, in Eden. And I don't know what else, but all those pits have been for sale and are going to be coming for sale. You know, the Walker pit for. You're talking about off the North Road. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's the Walker. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So who wants to be the Right idea. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll work with Ken He thinks he's getting off the select board, but I, 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 I Okay, so we just have to come to the meetings. We'll just keep him busy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, would, you you would, would you work with me on it, Ken? Oh, uh, certainly, but. Uh, and Roger, you would really want to work with him? Yeah. Yeah, I know, yeah. I never know. You'd have conflict with anything. But I, but I think you're absolutely correct. Uh, you know, down the road, that's going to be uh, just like the pit Morristown bought. Look what that saved the town of Morristown. It's it's huge. And just just to make a point, Morristown had an option on the on ten thousand dollars uh, for uh, Benny Emerson. Benny Emerson's pit for a million dollars, and Hyde Park bought it for five hundred thousand. So. That was a... Uh, I thought we paid Benny a million for that. No, 500. At no. uh, 500,000, no interest, but we had to, we had to uh, evade his taxes uh, for 10 years. And then after 10 oh. years, he paid his taxes. So, so figures taxes for 10 years, what those were, that was really in lieu of interest. So, so. Okay. Well, that's something to... So anyway, you have any questions on my, uh, my proposed stuff? No, I think it's a great idea. Good. I think it's a great uh, idea. And uh, somebody has to be there every time they dump. You can't just give somebody keys, they go dump it, and we'll okay. push it off afterwards. You have to be there, you have to inventory what was dumped. You dump the tonnage? Yeah, uh, no, by the yard. Okay, so no scale. No scales. No. So if you bring in a dump, tandem dump truck load of leaves, cost you the same as it does if it's a tandem dump truck load of concrete. Yeah. Uh, and uh, 
one step further, Casella is, uh, is on board to come in there. They have about three roll-offs a year, so it's not huge. But yeah. for a place yeah. to, to get rid of it, okay. it's all, all adds up. Okay. Yeah. Um, in terms of either of you two who want to work with these two? Yeah, rolling really be a good thing. Just because there's familiar clarity with the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. One of the uh, three of you... And I can give you a couple, it, three options so, and yeah. Yeah. you kind of yeah, ponder great. it from there. Yeah. yeah. No. No, I think that's a great idea, Dave. So, yeah, I can I can remember when the proposing buying the gravel pit in yep. there. I mean, people thought it was crazy, and I can remember them going, yep. oh, "That is not crazy. That's the kind of investment no. you know that just makes sense for oh communities gosh. to make." I can't tell you what that's saving the town now. Oh yeah. What, oh, what oh. saving the stuff has gone oh, up. Oh yeah. Uh, but it went. It, it would gone up, but Nato's is not that far from here. But you imagine Winooski and Jericho and Essex hauling that gravel that whole way. Uh, they do. But they, they <coughs> don't matter which way they go, they, yeah. there's nobody nearby down there where all the development gone. Look around what they're doing down to uh, Taft Corners. Yeah. When they get done, that whole field's going to be full yeah. of apartment buildings. Yeah, I know it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Over by Costco, they got probably, I don't know, eight or nine of them. They got some more going up over there. Where you take the road to go to Colchester and Chimney Corners there. The, the I, I building's everywhere. It's going to be good property to own if you can just set on it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It is, yeah. especially yeah. if you it's can a... negotiate the deal so that it doesn't. Yeah. You yeah. can go spend a fortune up front right. and, and do it. Yeah. So, you know, it's, just, it's just a valuable resource. One more thing while I'm here. Uh, uh, you, I think you're all aware I'm selling Stone View. Uh, the tenants are going to be buying it. They want to close on it uh, June uh, 10th. We were going to close in January, but it, encourage them not to because mm -hmm. We're still plowing and sanding and salting, and it'd be easy for us to continue and difficult for them to get somebody right in the middle of the season. Yeah, see where, yeah. Yeah. But where I'm going with this, the, the main road down there needs paving. So I mentioned it to Ron a couple of times. Uh, and uh, it's expensive to do. We used to do it with the support of the board. Of course, I had an interest, but we do like 100 ton a year, so we kind of kept it up. Last time anything was done down there was 2006. So it's been uh, 14 years since, well, on the main road. You, you guys did up around on the upper section of that yeah. two years ago, but right. the main road, last time anything was done on that. We're going to be paying off our CIG loan, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be, Hyde Park's portion is going to be about 50,000, and Wolcott's will be about 25. I think it's around 75000 So, my suggestion, and there will be no benefit to me because it will be the tenants that you'll be benefiting, 111 of them will send no kids to school and who pay a pretty substantial amount of taxes to the town to maybe reinvest that money into getting their main road paved down. Yeah. That way it wouldn't raise your tax rate any, and you would get that road paved. And I think How many miles is it? There? It's uh, less than a mile now. It would have to be paid. So wh where's the other hundred thousand all come from? Well, I think you could talk to Ron. <laughs> <laughs> what is it now with the paper mile? Uh, one hundred and sixty. Is that right? <coughs> well, it depends on how thick. About a hundred. Yeah. Mile it depends on what you do. About how thick it is. Yeah. yeah An overlay but, is about seventy-five. Yeah, I, but uh, I was. Mile. My decision to do it, I, I do a two inch overlay, that's what I do. But how I used to figure that is I used to figure a half inch for shim to go over and shim it first mm -hmm. and then put an inch and a half top on. And that, so you figure two inches to do that. So I'll give you a, take a ton per nine square yards. To, to that and it's a 21 foot wide road, not a little yeah. less than a mile. So 75, 80, somewhere in that neighborhood. For, for the shim and overlay? Yep. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yep. So, so that does at least a pretty small gap to try to work into. Yeah. So you're talking about my revolving loan fund. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you there go. You go. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got no <laughs> She knows where all the little oh, bikes yeah. are. Oh, this is your oh, yard. Yeah. <laughs> So, 
certainly your decision, no, right. no right. benefit yeah. no, to you or the other, but right. Right. it would, it would save the road because it's getting, so it needs some attention. Yeah. And it would build some pretty good will up there, I think, also. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll see what we do. Probably can sometime mid-April, that first of April, because Marilyn and I leave Florida right off. Uh, Rolly and I will get together and yeah. back some options. Yeah, and just look at some, uh, yeah, because there's a few options out yeah. there. And, uh, and I, I know of one for sure that's a good one, I think. Yeah, okay. yeah that'd be great. We'll be getting in touch with you again. Great. Right. I Thanks. think this is a great idea. Yeah. I don't think yeah. you need anything from us to support it, but it's. Yeah. Yeah. How many pieces of furniture can I destroy you? <laughs> I know you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> thank you for your time. Hey, thank thanks, you. Buddy, thank you. Good luck. Oh. There's a joystick that steer that whole ship. Oh my God. Really? Who did that? Uh, <laughs> Ken, before you leave, I want to be clear with the board why Ken was here in the first place, which was he applied, oh, yes. for, he applied for a zoning permit for the landfilling operation. Yeah. Part of the landfill operation includes a 50-foot right-of-way, new, to get to Jones Road. And there's three existing access points that Ken described. Yeah. One's going to be closed, the, yes. the short that, one. That was the, the short one. The original access yeah. to the vet will be closed. Up, up on top of Ken's. Up on top of Ken's yeah. yeah, and the other two need a determination by the select board, because those will remain, that it's not a change of use requiring a new 1111. So basically, Ken gave you the history. We, we never defined what change of use is. Typically, it's a change of use from you know, a, a meadow to a house or yeah, commercial right. to residential right. or something like that, but not a gravel pit to a landfill well, operation. Well, change of use, so taking it out, you're putting it in? Normally, it's, a, normally it's part of, if, you, if they didn't come in ahead of regulation, there would be a requirement to, yeah, to fill close it, it and, right. re and reclaim yeah. it with fill material, that would be part of it. But he doesn't yeah, have the, he, he doesn't did, have the benefit right. of any prior. Well, really. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. I just when Ron talking about doing it, I said he's doing today what is in any point. Once you take it out, you got to put it back in and cover it up and yeah. presto, you'd never know it was there. Yeah. You're just going through what is now best practice it, it, and providing a really good service. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah, and it will be. I think. It'll yeah. Be no, just yeah. that yeah. we don't usually have the project like that that comes in for the grandfathered mm -hmm. long right. history yep. that yep. you're really doing something that is part of that operation oh, or would have been yeah. a part of it or right. right so the permit was issued the zoning permit was issued as a landfilling permit related to the gravel pit closure i guess because you're not going to build anything on top of stumps no 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 never you know, be there, anything here except <coughs> for grass and, yeah uh, yeah the so pasture. and that's another mm -hmm. thing in the regulations Could that be the new ballpark yeah. Could be. You never, you never know. Scenic Vista. You said that's in land use. Uh, the rest no, of the farm is. They had 16 acres they'd taken out for. Uh, in this, so this you year. determine it as, a, as not a change of use and then yeah. he doesn't right. have to apply. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's, how, that's why I need to have closure on that. So yeah, and you also, it's, it's a little bit of a gray area because we're still taking gravel out, but we're, we're going to do reclamation at the same time. So, yeah. So I don't. You, you folks had besides that. Yeah, I don't. I don't see it really as any change in use, and I, I don't think there's gonna be a whole bunch. No. It's not because though you're gonna no. generate a whole bunch of traffic. No, no. I, I don't envision stuff. this. You're gonna see, you know, 20 trucks a week going in there. I kind of envision you're gonna see two or three trucks uh, every couple of weeks. Yeah. Uh, going in, yeah. and yeah. Uh, I doubt it. But nevertheless, uh, Howard charges twenty dollars a yard. To them. Um, he's already out of 10, which I think is fair. 20, I think, is pushing the envelope some. And I think we're probably going to be at 10. Uh, just, yeah. just because I think that's somewhat affordable. It will not discourage people from disposing yeah, right. that the proper way. Proper. Yeah. And yeah. plus, it'll, uh, if you take a tandem load of $140, it winds up over time being beneficial to to the kids to do that also. Yeah, no, no, I think, so I guess, so probably should we have a motion that he doesn't need a 
a new 11. Yeah, 11. That would, I mean, you're, you've talked about that, but right. you, can, right. you can make a formal we'll motion just yeah. to make sure it's Just done. to make sure it's clear, okay. All right, need a motion for, Ken does need a new a change in his 1111 for his project. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay, anybody abstaining? Okay. Thank you very much. Super. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. We'll, we'll get together. Okay. Yep, good luck to you. Okay, yeah, thanks, Roger. See you ya. Oh, Lots of the stop on the way out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Let me put this layer there. See ya. You don't enjoy that, Bernie? You can go order. It would be a surprise that you can get anywhere on that ship. Several people. Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. We go anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. No, well, there. Big ships are geared up for you know, everything. Okay. That's a great idea, Dave. Thank you. Not only what's so long, you really have some humdingers. You'll keep giving them even when you're gone, right? You ain't heard nothing. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. <laughs> making his list. And it's not for Christmas either. He's not going to wait that long, huh? Okay. No, it's not going to be good or bad. All right. What are we, uh, grand list 2019? Oh, yeah. A certificate of no appeal? This <laughs> annual document saying that we have no pending appeals with the State Board of Appeals or anything else. Oh, Superior okay. Court, whatever. So, and usually about this time every year, because we have to wait to the end of December before the time lapses for appeals. Okay. This is from the April, with your left side signatures, not the right side. Yeah, okay. Uh, motion. Yeah, okay. You want a chair? Yeah. Okay. Motion to approve the certificate of no appeal. Okay, need a motion, you guys. Make a motion to sign that. What was that? Certificate of Six. no appeal. Six. Certificate of no appeal. Oh, no. That's, a, that's an interesting title. Second. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Signify by saying aye. Roger's ready. Aye. Okay. Anybody opposed? Okay. Good thing. So don't, you have to sign that too. Is that one of the? It came on that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The grand list. Prepare for town meeting. Okay. It's ready. Ready. Any questions? <laughs> Everybody's got their town report. Thank you. I'm cruise through it. Yeah, I think so. You can cruise through it. The budgets, the budget. There's one page that summarizes everything there after the budget. And then uh, we go through the articles. And that's that. I haven't heard too much about anything. Tom Shepard calls you know, often and reminds me that the school's going up and the electric's going up, but he called today and said, electric's going down and you guys are holding at 2.84? Good, and he hung up. So, oh. I don't know if he's getting ready for another <laughs> editorial so comment. The, the, the electric's doing what? Going, well, I got ordered to go down by the PUC because they were asked for too much. 
Oh, so they're not going down from where they are currently, but they're not getting what they wanted. No, they have to give a credit back to July. I think. Oh, they've already charged us, you mean? Yeah, they, they adjusted last year. Was it September? Yeah. I, yeah. I think that's what I heard. Yeah, so they have to go back to the beginning, give everybody credit. It's kind of hurt after holding that money for so long. Oh. So they were 14% and I think they got approved to eight. Because they couldn't justify the reasons. And that'd be interesting to see why the UC didn't do that. But I have no idea. I don't have the background on that. But, and actually, it's coming from Tom Shepard, too. So I'm not, I haven't read it myself. So I, There's a filter. If, I, if you want me to investigate it, I can, I can get into well, it a little we must bit. Be, there's obviously got to be a copy of it that, that we can just to read their findings. I don't, yeah, he, 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 he monitors all that stuff all the time. So. Oh, it's separate. I'm going to Belvedere, Marville. Yes. They do the same thing at uh, Cambridge is the same way as North High Park is. And they pay him so much a year for the coverage. So we don't get nothing from them. We're going to go back up here today. Both of <laughs> us. Yeah. All trucks. So something needs to be decided about. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Yeah, okay. Tires. They don't point them. Okay. The tires yeah. on the truck. Yeah. I talked to Webster the other day. Webster said he found out he does not need to change them every ten years. Okay, that's what Ron sent me. Right. After fifteen years. Yeah. Of while I was gone. Fire, fire department says I have a hard time getting my email over there. Yeah. 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 As long as the, you get them checked. You know, as long as it's the, yes. the depth right. check. Right. Okay. Right. They need to be. They need but to be we're checked. still gonna. Think about the two thousand dollars. Yeah. Said. So this year, this budget has two thousand in for tire replacement for fire. And I asked Ed, "What's the real number? Is it four? Is it two? You know, what? How is your cycle? Even if you don't have a ten-year mandate." Right. And he was thinking, uh, four would be enough. But I, I haven't. He didn't give me any background for that. Well, I asked Ed when I talked to him. I said, "How many miles do you put on? They put on less than two thousand miles a year." Yeah. On a fire truck, it's more an idling time for the right. engine, and so so with two thousand miles of truck. Mm -hmm. I know a car, you know, it's forty thousand dollars, forty thousand miles. I don't know how much a truck is, but it should, should be somewhere up in there. Where tires really get hit hard is when they're out in the sunlight in the mm -hmm. summertime, the weather, yeah. in the winter time. Then they will. They will just start to deteriorate, yeah. right? But when they're inside, like they are, climate control. But how many times? How many? How many times did you replace tires in the fire department? I replaced the pumper, the tires he was talking about once. How about you, Will Perrot? Just one, one truck. That's all I ever had seen replaced. So, and they just did yeah. the new truck the other day, so, last week. So. So the issue isn't the fact that they do or don't. It's the fact that they don't tell us until they need ten thousand dollars. Right. Right. That's the issue. So I don't know what that schedule is. I mean, if he has tires that are on the three or four trucks that are going to last for. 20 years and the trucks are all 20 years old then we don't have to worry about it right if he has those trucks spread out at but we five to ten thousand dollars every five years 25 aren't we yeah, well that's yeah. what i was getting at the last 20 years you don't put two thousand dollars a year in because no right no but, but we just, don't but know just, that <laughs> right but to start a fund so we've got it plus do we have the same issues with the town trucks no we we do I mean, when when how well, often not, do we not have for, to not replace to we just wear them out I mean, the town wears them Yeah. Out. So the, what's missing on the town vehicles is the grader and the bucket loader and the right. backhoe that all come at once for some reason that isn't part of the regular tandem. And the way I understand it, they're, this year they're going to have to have tires for, for the grader. Yeah, and it's like 6,000 every six years. Jeez, or something. That's only three, four, four year, years old. Yeah, it's not. I'll tell you what, you're between the grading and all the time. And, <laughs> I've done them twice in my history here, grader tires. Yeah, that's the <laughs> Wow, that's too much. A lot of grading. Well, wow. a lot of grading. <laughs> when you're pushing hard, Dave, that blade is full, 14 foot blade, and it's full. You're, you're, that rubber's soft. So those are two on it. Yeah, highway, highway's much more volatile than fire right. would be, but I still don't know what fire <laughs> <But>, schedule is. <laughs> but having an account that's just tires, period, sounds as though it would make sense. Whether whether we end up whether it's the greater t I, again is it everything? Yeah, it's a hard. It's, it's hard to go gonna... account. It's hard to account for when you have it merged together because we we just broke out all the departments <laughs> yeah, into it. Right. So the question of 
of does fire need anything more than 2000 a year for those intermittent replacements or does it need to be a thousand so just so the money's in that re reserve right it's it's not going to be it's going to be a fraction of what highway really we couldn't need. Um, take that money and stick it in the equipment fund that's what we're doing yeah okay now can north Hyde come and we're doing half of north heights you don't have to do any of north Hyde park the we don't the no town. i was there probably ordered the truck <laughs> yeah the, no i mean on a on a Oh, regular basis. They'd be in their right. budget. They, yeah. they would put it in their budget. The reserve okay. fund for tires we we're anticipating was just for town. Okay. That's how we. Were, that's how I was looking at it. North Light Park. That's like a maintenance item. We don't want to start budgeting for, for them. But if they have a camera need, you know, air pack need, those are that's what we've used it for in the past. So, I don't know how to drill into that anymore. I think Ed's thinking about it, but I don't know if he's going to have a definite answer on that whether we change it next year or not. Yeah, well, we can start with 2,000 this year, and as we get more information, we can always... So there's 2,000 you got in there? Yeah, we put in this year. It's more of a savings. Right. It's going yeah. to be a dollar savings, not just right. a... Right. Yes, it's not going to vanish like some of the other money yeah, okay. to vanish. <laughs> it causes Susan's blood pressure to rise. Oh, man. Can we come in on the uh, <laughs> pistol things? Uh, what... The money's in the budget, and, and For who? we've the, on the fiscal, so <laughs> what we need to do. Bless, Bless you. you. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> it's, in the, it's in the budget. The, the money's in the budget. We've checked to see. It's not uncommon for communities to do this. But one of the things that's ongoing is, and, and again, our lawyer has said, you want to get out of the, of the, of the doing hourly Pays. You mm -hmm. want to get to a stipend system, so we're we're working on trying to figure out a stipend system, which of course leads to all kinds of other fascinating things as you start to drill down into how many people go out and do how much time and how. Yeah, how, see, that's how, that's how, a, that's the problem. Do it early. The guys that don't hardly come are going to get well as they, much as somebody else, more or less, unless you well, somehow you regulate it. Well, and that's why working with the Lord. So how can you regulate, regulate it? You know, and she's like, huh, okay. So we're we're still working and figuring and of course it doesn't have to start until the first of July. So figuring it out. The, we're gonna figure we got this amount of money to spend, so it's gonna have to fit in that box anyway. So still basing it on, on either system, here's how much money we spend on stipends or whether we're doing the hourly thing. It's um I the the <laughs> boy. Whew. The It'll fire department, it, yeah, yeah, it is. Well, making making any changes is, is hard, but but it's. I'm talking to Darren Severance, Town of Cambridge. Yeah. Captain. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. He's yeah. been officer. Yeah, yeah. And I asked him, this he's just back over to the office, the sheriff's office, and I asked him how their fire department works. And to my understanding, they're a lot like North Lake Park. That they're. Incorporated within themselves and stuff. Okay. I said, are you telling employees? He says, no. He says, we get an hourly pay that's on the stipend. But they're not considered telling employees. It's an hourly pay, but they Is that like uh, the our vast squad with $11 per call? Uh, Something like that? Apparently, but that's the point you're trying to get, yeah, right. get, get out of. Uh, right. Exactly. So, so maybe somebody can talk to chief down there. Is Alan Carey? Alan Carey, right? Okay, down in Cambridge to see how like <clears throat> or, or or select board. The liaison of the select board should be able to. Right, right. Figure out the best way to do it. And that would be. Uh, I don't know who's on there. Nitro buildings, nitro uh, electrician. Oh, I know what you mean. Um, brick, not brick. Uh, Anyways, we know who. Yeah, yeah, we can. Wyckoff, Danny Wyckoff. Wyckoff. Oh, okay. Um, it, I've, I've had some conversations, and one of the things later here about forming the, the uh, a committee to study the police services. And, and when you talk off the record, most of the select boards look at you know, this idea of talking with the sheriff and how, how do we do sustainable, what's supportable, 
you know, protection. And the next question I ask them, so what are you going to do with the fire departments? And everybody feels that it's like, you know, we can't. Um, towns, you have, you have trouble getting volunteers. The cost, how do you pay for it? Is it really sustainable? What's the future? Is it gets harder to recruit folks to do it? Um, you know, what's the, how, how, do we, how do we figure this out? But it's a topic that everybody seems to be afraid to sit down and talk about publicly which is we, we need to overcome that first because it's, it, it's not uh, um, uh, I've had a couple of interesting conversations with people on fire departments in different communities yeah. you know and I just find that to be really you know it's a hard thing. We need a fire department. Absolutely. And we don't want to take any money away from these volunteers Absolutely that are willing right. to give up their time to yep. help the town out. Yep. But on the town side, we've got to come to an agreement where our lawyer says that you we don't need town right. employees. So, so somehow right. we, we got to come town together. Employees. But but then the you know the bigger issue of here and high you know having the two here's North Hyde Park the amount of equipment that we have. Mm -hmm. You know, so when the next piece of equipment goes, uh, do we really yeah. need to spend six hundred and fifty thousand dollars on another piece of equipment? You know, when you're looking at what you really need and how you do okay. it, and then when you talk to them, they say, "Well, you know, the protocols now are that from when they get a call to you should be out and you should be at the site in seven minutes." What? <laughs> That's not happening in any rural community. Not today. Community. It's not. I mean, well, I was at the station not, for seven minutes. Yeah. No, we yeah. was. I would say we're probably close to being out of there in seven minutes today. Yeah. But happen to have a couple of people nearby. You you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. Huh. It, uh, yeah. No, you had seventy five yeah. middle of the night and you had six that showed up. Seven. Today we had um, uh, eight, I think. And then there was four more at the station by the time I got back bringing the coffee to, mm -hmm. to them. I heard the holidays, Mom. I want to boil some coffee. Uh -huh. <laughs> I heard the coffee. <laughs> Did you? Well, the thing is, it takes you 20 minutes to half an hour. Mm -hmm. And they never call back or nothing. By the time they call by and tell you, it's too late for you. It's too it. late. <laughs> They're on their way back, and I get it all made. Yeah. Now, a, a bumper truck, a tanker. Tanker and bumper, same thing. No. They can be. You can have a combination. A tanker and pumper. What did Lowell send down? A tanker or a pumper? I think they set, they set down a pumper and a rescue truck. Because you can, you, you can, a pumper you can hold with. Yeah, I probably do any, everything okay. with it. See, I sorry, it's got a pumper tanker. Yeah, but those, do be, either. those be the things to buy instead of a tanker. <coughs> and, and Absolutely. All you got to do is put a quick dump in them. Yeah. yeah see, I tried talking to them, putting the quick dump in this new one, they wouldn't do it. That was, that was For that one reason, because they'd know. A tanker is strictly water hauler, that's all That's it. Does. That's it, right. Yeah. And that's what that second truck, when we got to deal with Eden, was supposed to be. Just a truck to hauler water and a four inch hose. Way back so he could get into mutual trade. And then they turned it into a class one pumper. <clears throat> Okay. We but need you can't. Go ask, budget. You can't come yeah. in and ask somebody to do a study, something like that, because they're going to tell you you're going to need. Well, we they're going to take the square miles and everything. What's her name? Done a study for us. When there, she when she's supposed to come in there, the one that's Carol, manager of the Carol. Energy's management. Yeah, I don't know what the last name is. Oh, Carol Fano. Yeah, Fano. Didn't she do a study on? The no, she was never. Huh? She, we talked about it, but she never was activated on we, it. Well, she never activated, but I think that turned it off when she didn't get involved. She was supposed to be involved with the, with the plan, the emergency plan, and yeah, and it all fell apart because they never call her on them. She was supposed to be the head of it, right? Because Brad had stepped down from it, if I, if I remember right, because yeah, he had too many hats. He's holding tight. He stepped down from 911 signs. He kept his EMD hat, though. Okay. Not anything else? Do we need anything else on the budget? Mm. No, I guess uh, we'll take a minute to go through it, but uh, 
Although that won't much easier there. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We can say, you know, we'll know for town meeting if there's anything we need to or before if there's something we need to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See if it all makes sense. Okay. Um, the highway mileage certificate. Annual certificate, just like grand list. I have a whole bunch of changes from your 2019 hearings. So there's three parts to sign. Summary is you <laughs> when you distill all the hearings that you had on those nine roads, there was one no change for Richardson, and then there was a, a couple ads of class three road, a couple of deductions of class three road, uh, one ad of a class four, one ad of a legal trail, and deducted sections from class three from class four. So Basically, the state just needs to see all those in mileage. Okay. So you're reporting that you've completed these changes. They'll review it all, which is this whole packet. Okay. And then they'll issue a the signature okay. with any corrections. So you sign it, Kim signs it, and then Kim or somebody will send it to VTrans to have them review it with the right-of-way people. Now, does that, that affect our state aid? Yeah, so all, it all affects state aid. So the only one, actually not all of it, the class three changes, we had a plus 0.46 miles, about a half mile, and we had a minus 0.23. So we're adding about a quarter mile, which is 700 bucks a year or something yeah. like that. Not that much. Yeah, it's more of a housekeeping exercise right. than it is trying to get mileage. But there's some mileages that were wrong that we're fixing, too, because some of them are listed Class 3, and we weren't doing the Class 3 work on it. So the state had an inflated Class 3 number, which we do get money on. So we're actually correcting it on the state's behalf to a certain degree. But anyway, so there's three, three pages to sign. The certificate is the summary, and then there's two openings. Uh, one for Crab Apple Lane and one for the Sterling View Loop. So it'll be official Class 3 roads. So after you get done with your three signatures, we'll hand it over to Kim. You heard her send up right here, side out by the uh, Last night at the school district annual meeting, I went to go talk with him. He had left halfway through the meeting and he wasn't there. Do we all need to sign? Yeah. Yeah. Um, There's two columns on one of those pages. Yeah. In there, and then there's plenty of lines on the others.
place is three. Three. Yeah. yeah. You've been on vacation, it's hard to get back to, you know. Really? <laughs> Still thinking of the green grass I left yesterday. <laughs> Do you have green grass along your driveways now? No. No. Well, it's under there somewhere. <laughs> no, no. Yes. I left Georgia yesterday. Yes, sewer problem. Green grass. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about that green grass. That's another. Still going on. I'll talk to you afterwards. Oops. The um, you might want to do that tomorrow. I think there's more to it that I need to talk to you about. For this. So if you want to hold it, or I can give it to you tomorrow. There's some some language on your certification. I wasn't sure what it meant. So okay. I think on the certificate of road opening, I think that means today's date. See where your certification is. It's got like a time and a oh, day. Yeah. Oh, well, I was going to sign the certificate of mileage. Yeah, that's easy. I think that's a straight yeah. up one. The other two I didn't. Okay, we need a anyway. need a motion to yeah. I guess to accept it. To sign it. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. All right. Modifying the life benefit. It's a little handout there that just shows you the, the change in rates from okay. January 1st, which were reduced in Backfilling the savings a little bit by increasing from ten to twenty-five thousand as an option. <clears throat> Still saving money on the budget. We budgeted twenty-two hundred a year, and it's so how five hundred bucks. How much this is going to cost the taxpayers? Nothing. Well, I mean, the no, taxpayers are paying twenty-two hundred, and that is. Know, where's my little sheet? If you the last page on this. Yeah, I had a little breakdown of what yeah. the cost was. Last page. No, you yeah, there it is. Yeah, there it is. So we go from last year was nineteen hundred seventy-one dollars, and then the rate reduction got down to fourteen seventy-seven. And if we go up to the twenty-five thousand from ten thousand, the cost is eighteen twenty-five. So we'll save 150 bucks a year by going to the 125. We'll save 495 by staying with the 10,000. And the budget is up. Is how high. much a year? 495. Yeah, the savings is 495 dollars a year if we stay with the 10,000 dollar policy, because of the rate reduction that started January 1st. So it's four, about fifteen hundred dollars a year, day for everybody at ten thousand a year. But you say the rate reduction. Yeah, the rate re, the rate was nineteen seventy one. Yeah. At ten thousand dollars per person. Yeah. The rate reduction got to fourteen seventy seven, or about a five hundred dollars right. savings for the year. So if you use some of that savings and put it into about three hundred and fifty dollars of that savings and put it back into the policy, you can get to twenty five thousand. And still be less than the budget of twenty two hundred. Right. So, so you can a, give them more benefit with the same amount of money. Or if we didn't do anything, it would knock it out, wouldn't it? Yeah, you'd say five hundred. Five hundred a year per all the employees. Yeah. Yeah. Per. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's, so it's, yeah, exactly. No, no, right. You're thinking yeah. per person. Yeah, it's a, no, no right. we just wanted to just wanted to right. spell out because it's a little bit of a yeah. change. Yeah. And twenty, there are some employees. I think Allison and Mark Lahulia were talking about. I don't know if they just buried somebody and it was close to ten thousand. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not cheap to actually right. physically bury somebody. So no, it, it was on the average cost of him was fourteen thousand. Right. So I think that's what they were saying that ten thousand right. wouldn't even cover the burial. Right. It doesn't even yeah. cover it. So if for not that for amount of money, I, I, we can if, increase it to twenty five. If, if it was five hundred dollars employee, I was wrong. I feel, but I guess I'm all for the ten. No, it's, it's a few hundred each. Yeah. yeah. Not even that. Yeah. Not okay. Even. Yep. Okay, so I guess a motion to go to the twenty-five is a benefit. Yeah. Make motion to go to twenty-five thousand benefit sure. life insurance. Yes, life insurance. Yeah, life insurance benefit, right? Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay.
Okay. Um, right, to establish a committee to study police services and talking a few minutes ago. You already talked about it. Yeah, Check. that's right. So we need, that's right. Check. But we need to, because we, oh, okay. we thought we needed to do it to actually form it. So, you know, this is, this could be a serious enough conversation that the group that we get, and we thought it should be two people from each town. So you get a committee of six. So there'd be someone on the select board, and then the other two towns were thinking you needed somebody that's got either fire or emergency background, you know, that, that kind of connection. Um, my thought that, that Carol Fano, if we could talk into it, that, that's you got, right. There's, you got two birds and one stone right there. <laughs> that's right. But we need two people, so, you know, and, and so, again, that's right for... Roger and uh, and Carol. a regular. I think if we can get Carol to do it, she would be great with the experience that she has. Um, and she and she's looking for positive ways, and she's very interested in emergency management. Um, and I think putting her on this sort of thing, if she'll do it, would be a would be a good use of her talent. She's looking to be, you know, to be more involved. And we thought doing it this way and having it be official, then they would, and we're talking like probably meet once a month, and that to have some suggestions in January so that if we want to start making any changes, we can put it into next year's budget. And at a minimum at next year's town meeting, there would be a report to folks that here's what, you know, we're looking at, here are options, here's are what. Are you trying to reduce the uh, sheriff's budget? No. No, we're trying to have it figure out how to have it be sustainable. And this is what Roger's been asking the town yeah, to do for several started, years. We started at 10, we got down to, three, well, we we're going to get down to nothing, but we gave them three. Because yeah. we felt that they need something. Right. And, and, and so I know it's going to come up again next year. It's probably not going to be able to hold it at three. Right. Roger, Roger had said that he, well, he was what we said, no, you can't, doing nothing. Every, basically, the town is looking at three per, you know, close to three percent. He's got the same costs and what, you know, he's just digging into his pocket and covering it, making up the, you know, the difference. And he's right along said for at least a year now that there needs, that we towns need to get together and... and see what we want. And, well, and see what we want and come yeah. in and, and really find realistically what the options are. You know, people may go, oh, we're going to get the state police. Well, the state police, are, they're, they're saying they're not, we're not doing any more contracts. Yeah. 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 Something happens, they're going to come from Williston. Yeah, well, they're, plus they aren't willing to take any more, you know, they're not going to do any town contracts if you want to. <coughs> the, the, and, but anyway, just to get a group together and have it be formal <coughs> and need to do open meetings and keep minutes and just and, and do the whole thing so that we can come up long term with a with a sustainable solution for, for police coverage for the, you know, for the area. And what you know what we need to do so we said yep yeah, okay we'll, we'll officially form the form the group get Roger and see if we can get Carol to do it with them and they say we're sort of guessing that they meet once a month um, we can we can use the, the, the in the two towns with administrators get a little bit of help there if we need it for just collecting some paperwork and homework and that sort of stuff and, and, and we're going to as well. See, I'd like to see them, if, if that's what the Monmouth County Sheriff's Department, and I'm neutral on this. Yes. Yeah. I'd like to see that all the towns in the Monmouth County give to the Sheriff's Department. Well, that would be a lot but, better for everybody. That would be a lot better for everybody because I can well, tell you towns but that I don't see because that darn thing. But you have an emergency. And they call. Oh yeah. They go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no. They can't we, say we no. Are, we're not going to go. We three towns that are picking up the tab are totally aware of that. But yeah, that's okay. why I think it needs with the. That's why we're seeing the need to have it be a formal committee. So then it's coming as a request from the three towns to meet with other towns to say, okay, here's what's you know here's what's happening. Here's what's going on. Mm -hmm. You know, here's the here's what? the long term future. What do you what do you want to have for coverage? There's been changes, so it might be a different outlook on things, Dave. If we get all together and talk to them. Yeah. Yeah. 
because it would be better for everybody. Oh yes, everybody paying, but it'd be, it'd be cheaper for everybody. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And they get exactly. better coverage. Right. Well, that just and again, if we sort of yeah. can regionalize <coughs> the, the police coverage, well, then maybe we can start regionalizing some other things too. But we figured that Rogers, the, the, the sheriff's a good place to start. So I guess what we need is a uh, probably is a motion to form the committee, right? Make a motion to form a committee for the study of the state police. I mean, the police services. Police, police services. services. Okay. For the more county. Or whatever. Oh, okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Well, we know it's going to be I'm Roger and somebody. I'm not <laughs> abstaining from the. Okay. Well, you can study it. You shouldn't be opposed to studying it. No. no. Oh, just study it. No, yeah. I won't oppose to that. Yeah, no, this is, this is yeah. just, we're just forming the committee. Okay. <coughs> okay, we're good. Review the minutes. January 7, January motion to accept the select board monthly meeting for January 7th, January 20th, and January 29th. That's right. Second. And you've got to sustain really from the 20th. 20th. I will abstain from the next of the 20th. Okay, so let's see. So do all in so do all in favor of the 7th and the 29th. Signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed or abstaining? Nope. Okay. Then for the 20th, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? That's you. Yes. Okay. Okay. Here's the fun part. <laughs> okay. yeah, I'll leave We're not won't take the rubber bands off anymore. No. <laughs> I, get, I get in trouble. They oh, do. Okay, off. Yes. <laughs> okay. Phew. You're tempted, I know. Just... That's right. Do not. <laughs> she's, Give she's, those giving, back. she's giving me nice, clear directions. If you want anybody wants to look, those are all the ones to look at. There we are. Yeah, that's right. This is all the. <laughs> Roger, my name. That's right. She's like, don't. Catch them. Okay, okay, we all sign where these yellow tabs are. That's it. Correct. I'm so gun shy. I don't know. What I to don't do. not know. That's <laughs> it. So as long as we keep that packet there, it's all we're good. Okay. How can you look at it without taking the rubber band? Okay, as long as you put them back in the right order, you're okay. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> if you had a computer, then no problem. Or a cell phone. It works half noon. You try to email with me and it says go through. So I have a lot of problems with my phone. I tell you, that's probably one of the best things they've ever done. To send those uh, those bills out by. Yeah, yeah, no, that that definitely that has been pretty helpful. Yep. I hear about it every time I ask my daughter to look something up. Give me a lot of so I just don't ask her anymore. And just because you got one, don't mean you don't have to use it. 
right. computer. Because I'm telling you, I just had mine changed up to Windows 10, and I'm telling you. <laughs> well, yep. I had to do mine here, too. Messed up a couple things, but not too bad. okay to tear apart that one it's mixing the two that's the problem so if you open both of them there's a problem no, that's right not, not, that's right. not that one How's your project doing? Trying some polling, some polling, some voting up at uh, Sterling U. That's Saturday. From Saturday from 10 to noon. Me and Mitzi um, McGinnis and um, oh. Ed French and. Yeah, but you got to sign them, ain't you? Yeah, these are the real ones. Oh. I think that's, <coughs> that's great. That's a wonderful idea. What do you call that? Traveling votes? It's called mobile mobile poll the mobile polls. Mobile polls. Mobile polling. They're gonna send you out to Nevada next. No, no thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you go to uh send me at Oakland. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, there we go. All right. Carolinas could could use it. Kim and I were talking earlier today, and I said it's, you know, you do early voting absentee, because the thing they're doing in Nevada, it's like, okay, they're they're doing what caucuses do is rank choicing, which Burlington has tried a couple of times and thrown out. A lot of communities that try it ultimately decide they don't like it, but it's where, you know, you put your first, second, and third choices. So they also wanted to do early voting, but, but they'd still make you come to the place. And it's why don't with early voting, why can't you just do it all in the mail? I mean, you know, it's so, and it's okay, I think it, it's Oregon, who has for years has done everything by mail. Yeah, but couldn't, couldn't, <coughs> way out left field, but couldn't one person send in more than one? How are you going to get your ballot? I mean, it's the same way we deal with that all the time. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's true. True. You either have to come in and get it, or it gets mailed directly to you. You have to fill out the request, it gets mailed to you. So when we send out a ballot to somebody, we make them request it. If they request over the phone, or if they request online, we fill out a form. But we go in and we say, okay, Mary Smith requested these ballots, and we put in, we mail them. And then we put in that it came back. So if somebody tried to send another ballot to Mary Smith, they're going to see that Mary already got it, and she already returned it. Which is so sometimes you can end up with the problem is someone will, will want to vote early absentee and they get it and then they lose the ballot. And then they come to the polls and say, I, I got it, but then I lost it. But now what do I do? So yeah. we have to make them you sign an affidavit <coughs> stating that they got it, they lost yeah, it. Lost we it. have to verify that we didn't get it back and then we let them vote. There's all kinds of checks and balances so that stuff yeah, like so that. Does, don't get missed. Doesn't happen, right? Yeah. Yeah. You did. I want to send you what I got from the enforcement guy. Okay. So it's probably a lot more secure than just, a, <clears throat> you know, except for showing up, but then, you know. Make motions up to town orders. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Oh, aye. Yeah. Paper play. Anybody opposed? Oh, okay. yes, I try. All right. All right, we're good. Mm -hmm. 
the one that showed it means. Let me get there. Okay. You gotta know how to move things along. There you go. Well, he's, he's eager to get out of here tonight. What? <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We need to go into executive session? Yeah.